Hi, I'm Danny. And I'm Rita, and we are local adopters. Um, we have two birth children, and about a year ago, we started our adoption journey. We were foster carers originally, and we had a few foster children come into our family, and it was lovely. But we both felt that as much as we loved fostering, that we could do so much more and give a child more than just a temporary home. We wanted to offer a child a permanent home. And we also felt we had space in our family to have another child. We couldn't naturally have another child. So we thought it would be a lovely thing to adopt a baby. And so we decided to start our journey to fostering to adopt. Fostering for adoption is something that we felt really suited us as a couple and as a family. Um, with fostering for adoption, you take on a child um, with the intention to adopt that child. So you, at the beginning of your journey of the adoption, you are registered as foster carers and you basically do all the things you do via fostering you have to go to panels and so on and get approved and once approved you are registered as a adopter but you're a foster carer at the same time and from there you are then obviously selected a child and or if your social worker will offer you know give you um send your information um, of a child and you basically say yes or no if you would like to start um, accept that child into your family and you then go to a panel again a matching panel who then ask questions just to make sure that you as a family and that child are a good match because they want to make sure everything is right for that child that you are potentially adopting. In some cases with foster for adoption, the child can go back to birth parents and that's why in the beginning you are a foster carer, registered foster carer slash adopter. As yet, yeah, if the situation can change, Generally, you, you take on um, uh, often it's, it's a much younger child that, that will come to you. Um, you get the continuance from a much younger age, so there's mm -hmm. less um, less risk of any separation from um, connections with foster carers and things like that. So it's we, way way we understand it, it's, it's much better for the child's development because there's no um, there's no none of the separation between um, like from from um, bonding that they've, they've already formed so you're with that child from a much younger age and you get the continuance all the way through from often from it can be from birth that you get the child and then you go through all of the all of the early early stages and mm -hmm. and then eventually the child is is yours for, through adoption and i think as well for us as a family we as foster carers we were having children come in and a lot of them had been through the system and through many different homes and for us you saw we as a family saw that effect on a child how moving from home to home to home the emotional and attachment effects that has on a child is absolutely devastating actually because that child then struggles to build strong attachments with you um, and for us, we could see that and we thought, actually, we can do something about this. And, you know, we really wanted to have another baby. And we knew through the foster for adoption was the way to go. And we knew that we could a child that we would get would be smaller and that it probably would have either come straight from birth parents or from a foster carer so it wouldn't have had too many disruptions from moving and when we would then receive the child we knew that we could build that bond and attachment with that child so as a family we knew that would work really well and we've got two older children our oldest son is 19 he's autistic 
and our youngest son is 15 and we always consulted them when it came to fostering and for the foster for adoption it's only a family journey yes. all the way through we got the input from the boys um yeah. and we we went through the whole process as a family because it involves us all as a family and we wanted to make sure they were comfortable and they felt this was a journey they wanted to go on as well and they also wanted a smaller child um, to come into our family home that we could make our own be like make part of our family and and we started the process and yeah and and that's the beginning of our journey <laughs> So we wanted a small baby, naught to three was our original um, thought. And our social worker who took us on our journey of um, through the stage through, one yeah two. through stages one and two, fantastic social worker. Um, she actually found our daughter for us, and she was six months old. And we were, I, I was a little bit hesitant because we had it in our heads, naught to, six, naught to three months. And when our social worker at the time was explaining to us, um, just giving us a little bit of detail, she had said, you know, just keep an open mind. And so she then brought us the profile of the child. And yeah, we just, it wasn't a great picture so we couldn't it was black and white and we couldn't really see her face very well and we just kind of looked at her and she looked small she she didn't look in my head of a six month old the picture I had she just looked so much smaller and so we just we decided that actually six months old wasn't a bad idea and um yeah we were able to read all the, all of the information and so we decided yeah let, let's try also some, some of the information on the profile like eye color skin yeah. tone everything like that just seemed that she would be just fit in with us in our family. Family. we weren't yeah. particularly hung up on any particular um features that we wanted in, in a yeah. child but everything about the profile just seemed to be a perfect match for us yeah We're from a multicultural family, so race was never an issue for us when it came to matching, um, because there's mixed race in my family. We both, both grew up in a big city as well. Both grew up in multicultural areas. areas, so it wasn't race for us wasn't an issue. Um, we did have we we because we have two boys, we did want female, so we were able to give those specifics. Um, and when it comes to matching, your social worker does go through those those things with you so that information and actually you get more choice than what you think you do so it was quite interesting to see when we were interviewed by a social worker ask those important questions because they are important because matching is you know they want to get it right for the child as much as you want to get it right as a family and so the questions they asked were very very open and there was no judgment on what you know the fact that we said female only um because we wanted some pink around the house <laughs> was was great that we could give that option and and we could also you know give certain specifics um even with a child's learning so obviously when a child is born and depending on their story you don't know what is the outcome of that child so like our eldest son for instance he's autistic now when he was born we didn't know he was going to have autism it was as he grew up things developed and it's the same thing with a, a child that comes to you from um, a certain background you don't know what to expect and they go through things like that with you about what you're prepared for and and what you think you could cope with and for us it wasn't an issue because of our eldest son so because we've been through that and not a lot really shocks us so we were able to be very open about um specific but through the whole process there was, there was no pressure on us to say to 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 have to keep an open mind we, we yeah. could have been as specific as we, as we wanted to be yeah but obviously we were quite open because we have experience dealing with um, special needs 
and um, we had experience through the fostering process as well so we yeah. we were able to keep quite an open mind but there's there's nothing to say that you have to be completely open you can you can be very specific yeah. in the type of child that you want which is which is amazing and it is all about you your family and that ch and you know your future child it is about that and i think that's something that they make very clear and that your social worker as well you can share that with them we we had a very well we, through the process we've had very good social workers so we had one social worker take us through um because because there were three stages that you go through so there was one social worker that took us through the stages and she was absolutely fantastic and it was with her that we shared all of those things with because you talk about matching and so on and then we were given another social worker um who was also amazing who took us like further on that journey so when it came to us finding our daughter um it it was all it all just fell into place and everything there was no pressure so the whole matching has just been fantastic and it's all happened quite naturally as well for us which is quite nice so it's just this our daughter came available and like i said before um we just knew that she was for us and so that's why we went along and yeah continued the journey of um meeting her and so on and yeah i think that that's one nice thing about matching and obviously you have to then go to a matching panel usually you do the matching panel first before you have the child but because her case was so different and they needed her to be moved into a family a foster for adoption placement quite soon or quite immediate actually um she was actually put with us before we went to a matching panel well, we were already covered through the, but through we the were already process, covered anyway. through the fostering process so possible. yeah so it all made it possible I do think that you've just got to take any expectations of yourself and just go into it naturally. As long as you're going into adoption with the, the main core is to love that child as your own, that's the beginning. And I think that is the start of all the skill set that you need because everything else comes naturally after that. Or if it if you feel it isn't coming naturally, there is support out there for you that you can get from your social worker or you can get from friends, you know, you can because we've got a great support system around us and um, we rely on them as well for support um, and just advice sometimes as well. So yeah, from a practical from a practical perspective, when you go in the industry from the start, you need to be prepared. It's not an instant process, it takes time to go through the assessment process um it takes several months to go through normally before you get to panel um and some of the questions like also they, mm. they they can be quite they can seem quite invasive some of the questions yeah. however they're essential to um to, to the process um but again if, if you're going into this you think well how can i love a child that isn't my own you just fall in love with the child it's mm. not something you need to worry about it just comes naturally um and yeah you you as soon as you see that i mean as soon as we saw our little one the you just the just fall in love falls out, yeah. yeah and it's it just it just just happens naturally and i think the nice thing about it as well is if you feel it's not working that's okay too because that's what your social your social worker is there for to support you and there's no pressure on you you don't need to feel bad about that because sometimes we don't connect and sometimes we struggle to connect you know to grow attachments and also we've got you've got to go you've got to think about that child's connections of growing new attachments to you that they may take longer and it just may take a little bit more time for attachments to grow between you and that child and again that's okay you don't have to put pressure on yourself you've just got to just keep going don't give up and just know that you're doing a really good job so you're through the process you have to attend so both me and dan had to attend so many training days 
um, obviously it's just part of the learning of what to expect and so on and the good thing about going to these training days and something we found really helpful is other people we, we met other people on the course who were going through the same thing we were going through different stories different backgrounds but wanting the same outcome of adoption and we ended up forming some lovely friendship groups and we've actually got a whatsapp um chat group and everyone has put on there about when they received a child and the outcome and um, when their child was adopted and it's just been so lovely to keep connected with those people that we met and it's really and you actually because we had a two days didn't we like consistency yeah. and within two days like there was about 12 of us in a room and we were just so connected and I think it's the journey and because you're all going on this you're all on the same journey the connection yeah. was just amazing and it really helped actually and so it's one it's encouraging to be one of the last ones to, to actually get to be, be matched with the child but it's encouraging because you're seeing these other people pick up sometimes yeah. it's frustrating it's like oh what wins out yeah but yeah it's still encouraging to see other people and, and you, you see you, you're part of that journey with them as well and one couple we became really good friends with actually and they don't live too far from us either and um, their adoption all went through as well and it was just, it's just lovely to have that to form those friendships and yeah so it th there are some amazing positives along the way and yeah. you do get new friendships which and is also really build, lovely build support groups, uh, again yeah. while, you, while you're doing it with people that are going through the same thing so yeah again if you, you when you form those friendships and relationships you've got someone at the end of the phone or something you, you can discuss things with them as well and they're going through the same yeah, thing as you it's really and you can all share different ideas in, in your training sessions you can all share your experiences so um earlier on the question about being what skills can you bring to this actually your training day you you learn from each other everybody has different sets of skills and so much was shared in those in the training rooms with one another well, it was just <laughs> lovely you were able to help each other and give each other advice and one of the things that stuck to me there's one exercise that we did and you've got different scales and where you would and we had to go and stand where we were on this scale depending on the question and near enough every question me, me and me were at opposite ends of the scale <laughs> and we're like is this good or is this not good but oh, you learn that, that you, you'll find somewhere in the middle and most couples and, were like that yeah <laughs> to an end. And, and that's lovely because you actually you know all these training days as well they're made fun as yeah. well which is lovely and you do have to bear in mind that you are going to be covering child protection and things like that um which is a nice you know no child protection meeting and safety and so on isn't comp isn't very comfortable because it's obviously what you're hearing but it's necessary but the nice thing is is that you're doing it with a like we said a group of people and you're going through it together so you can just on your lunch break go out and just breathe together and just chat about what you've learned and it just helps lift that off you so yeah that was quite good we went into this knowing that we had an amazing support system because for any new parent and for any adopter for any foster care, you need that you need that because you just need and it's not about having support people coming in and doing things for you it's just having someone there to say you're doing a good job mm. don't give up keep going going into the adoption our faith has been something that has really carried us through this so we are christians um, and we have been you know before, as we started the process we we were praying for our daughter because we didn't know who she was obviously we didn't know what was going to happen and we had our friends praying for us and just knowing that even when we had to go through this invasive because it is a very invasive journey of the process we know that there were people praying for us and supporting us and that in itself really helped us and as christians um it just gave us that hope in knowing that whatever the outcome was that you know it was it was going to be all right and that we had a good a good community there to help us through it definitely if it's something you're thinking about just start the ball rolling yeah. um start start the process if at any time you think actually i really don't want this that there's nothing to stop you saying actually it's not for me 
get the ball rolling, start start things off, start met, make, meeting with a social worker. Um, but obviously, as as we, as, as we said, if, if you have a family, um, make sure everyone's on board first. Mm. Um, again, going through the process, you have to bear in mind all the way through this, at every stage, we were saying to our children, is, is this still something you want to do? Mm. And if at any point they don't want to, that don't force them. Just just mm. be, even if you just put it on hold for a, for a short time and, until they're ready. Yeah, um, but and, until if, if it's something you think about, just just start the ball rolling. That's all I would say. And also ask those questions. Ask those questions and don't be afraid to ask any questions. Whatever questions you've got going on in your head, mm. whether it be about faith, gender, um, anything, you ask those questions because you have the right to know and also it gets rid of the fear the fear of the unknown what if being able to ask questions and you don't have to worry about even if the question sounds silly at the end of the day if you've got a question that you just need to know the answer to ask it because at the end of the day you're going to walk away from that meeting feeling a lot better mm -hmm. and that will help you on your decision one thing i will also say is during the process your if you have birth children or any children in your home they obviously obviously to make sure that they're on board and that they're ready to do this they are interviewed by your social worker by your assessing social worker but it's not done in an interrogation way at all it's done in a really family friendly all about your child orientated way so your child doesn't come out traumatized or too many questions they come out really relaxed and that helps the social worker know if everybody is ready so for us if one of our children had you know had said actually no I don't want to tell mum and dad but no I can't do this our social worker would have let us know that and we would have had to look at actually is this the time right now do we need to give them more time to grow spend you know before we get you know welcome another child into the family so I think it's just making yourself aware of that that you go into this as a couple as a family um or if you're single you know it's just no just, just make sure you've got that good support network around you because you you don't want to do it alone even as a family we it may look like we're not doing it alone because we're a family unit but we still needed that support network out there for us so yeah and one, just, one thing i would add to that is as you're going through the process there is no such thing as a silly question yeah exactly. you need to have everything everything clear in your mind mm -hmm. as you go through the process you, so ask a social worker any questions that you have even if they may seem silly or irrelevant or, or anything like that to you mm -hmm. it's important to the process it's important to get it really clear in your mind as you go through the process yeah absolutely there have been ups and downs for us real ups and downs for us in the process just knowing you know um how long it's going to take when will we be offered a baby you know all those different things go through your mind and you do go through so many emotions you really really do go through so many emotions but the reward at the end like dan said we met our daughter and it was just love at first sight and it's almost like when you carry a baby you know you go through those nine months of agony of discomfort and just when is it all over but then when you have your baby in your arms it's just the most beautiful thing ever and i just i just want to share this story when um so we had spent a week with our daughter and then the foster carer was bringing her to us bringing her up to us because obviously we had to settle her into our home her new home surroundings and i remember the foster carer so she traveled up and i was sat on my sofa and dan had gone in the kitchen and put the kettle on and the foster carer gave her to me and it was like being handed a newborn baby and i just and then she went the foster carer then went to the kitchen and I just remember I sat on the sofa and I just cried because I was just like, my, my baby's arrived. And the feeling was just so beautiful. And I just thought all that, all that time of waiting, all that time of 
wondering and just going through what we had to go through and all those questions we were asked and all those nerve wracking panel meetings we had to go to being handed our daughter was honestly for me it was just like it was worth it it was every painstaking question of panel every everything it was just worth it and it the reward is so much greater most definitely yeah much greater the part of the process that took longer than than we expected was the the whole legal side because all the courts courts were closed and and taking longer because Due of the whole, COVID, the whole yeah. COVID thing um so the process where it would normally take six seven months mm -hmm. i took the best part of a year for the legal side of things to be sorted but um again it, it's just just the patients having the patients through the process mm -hmm. We've had loads of support from my daughter's social worker as well, because your child will have their own social worker. You have your social worker. You have until the adoption is official. You do have meetings that you have to attend and so on. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like to say that actually, yeah, her, that her team were absolutely amazing and they were really good and very um, quite the word i'm looking for i suppose is they were they communicated well with us and kept us updated as much as they could do our social work was absolutely fantastic she was just really really good if we had a question and we wanted to know the answer she would go find the answer um for us or you build up that relationship with both your social worker and your child social worker that's really important to make sure that you keep a really good relationship yeah. and also I think it's also really important something that for us when we went into it when we went down to because the process of meeting her was done via us going to where she lived to her foster home and we went into the foster carer that we had was absolutely amazing she was just wonder woman honestly she she was absolutely lovely and i think you have to be open-minded as well because the first day we met our daughter i just wanted to go in there pick her up and do everything but you can't <laughs> And even though you feel really frustrated, you can't. And you have to listen to your, the foster carer. Yeah. And I think that's something really important that you don't fight against your, the foster carer of your child because they have looked after that child for however many months. Yeah. They have got your child into a routine. They have got your child to where they are now. They've given your child love and everything they've needed and i think it's important that when you go into a situation where there is a foster carer who's you know our foster carer had had our daughter for six months so for us we had to be really open-minded and respectful of her and not try and even though we're parents you know we have certain ways but we had to really show that respect and in actual fact we adopted our foster carers routines and everything that she did with our daughter we actually brought home with us didn't we and continued that because it's really important as well for your child to be kept in certain routines especially when they're making that big jump from you know even if it's like so for our daughter it was her first move wasn't it and that's going to be really traumatic because it is a trauma leaving you know she's been with the foster care for six months so i think it's really important when you go into the foster for adoption or into an adoption just be mindful of your foster of the foster carer that's had your child and yeah i think it's really important that you value what they've done mm. with your child really and also really through the sense. transition process keeping them yeah in mind because it's it's a separation for them too it almost yeah. almost a loss for them because there's a little little child they've looked after for however long um it's very mm. very emotional for them too so again including them in the process we still keep in touch yeah. um with, with, the, with the foster carer now we um send the old text and um and communication and with keep them updates, just to keep updates, yeah. yeah keep and i think a lot of people may feel that foster carers are just there it's a job 
but we were foster carers once and it wasn't a job it's a commitment it's a commitment to whatever child you get to love them until they're ready for a new family or ready to go back to their family so I think it's really important that you value that so no we are going to be going through the process again um so yeah we've just loved every minute of it and we look at our daughter every day and every day is a new day of I love you so much and we just look at her and fall in love with her completely every day and with, with all of our children our birth children and with um, our daughter we just fall in love with, with them and so for us we know in our home and in our hearts we've got plenty room yeah. so we are going to be doing it again and before we get too old and we can't <laughs> we want, we, we, but yeah and you know it is hard work it's not being a parent isn't easy you know being yeah it is you know having sleepless nights and sick when they're sick it is really really hard but it's so rewarding and yeah we we will be doing it again and people may think we're crazy but actually the amount of love that we have for her and for our boys we've we've still got so much more to give so yeah